Hey, hey, math people, and black pen, red pen, I'm looking at you, but you're not looking at me, but you will be once you're watching this video. Anyway, uh, I noticed while scrolling through my feed that you have a little contest challenge thing going on here, checking out brilliant.org. Sure, okay, I'll do that. Uh, because I am a brand new calculus teacher this school year, and uh, I teach Calc BC. It's a lot of work, it turns out, and we move quick, and I, I could use any additional resource possible in terms of providing that for my students because uh, I care and you know it's it's nice to provide them with supplementary things so maybe brilliant is something that I could play around with who knows uh, so let's ignore all the nerdy stuff all the nerdy video game references you can actually see that I watched some of these fully the world record progression for Pokemon red blue speed runs let's ignore the fact that I'm a sham and I don't watch math videos as much as I do watch video game videos but uh, and let's dive to the to the brilliant stuff let's dive into the math the calculus I'm trying out their calculus fundamentals course uh, and they they give you access to three quizzes when you don't give them your money I will say that there are many other courses though so I, I, I will say there's there are a number of courses and I'm sure they'll give you you know maybe three quizzes each or whatever for for some of these um, yeah here's three that are unlocked in my experience teaching calculus thus far in my month experience limits went pretty good the one issue with limits though really came down to the weird boys this is where things got strange uh, so sine x over x sine of 1 over x and x times sine of 1 over x these were the weird ones as you approach zero so i'm actually happy that brilliant chose the, these three functions there's a, it's called limits intuition as a little a uh, little module of sorts. They start you with some sort of image of some oscillation with a spring, and springs are usually modeled using periodic functions like sine, so that's really nice. And it's saying, uh, let us look at the average velocity. Find the average velocity of this thing. Okay, uh, so if we were to do this, uh, we, we know that sine of t is the position of the mass, and it's changed in time, and it looks like the interval's from zero to t. So uh, intervals from zero to t, and we're ignoring the fact that I already have the answer. Um, let's pretend I didn't already do this. So it's saying find the average rate of change. All right, well, uh, average rate of change is secretly just slope. Uh, so we're finding sine of t minus sine of zero, and this is all over. Uh, the change in x values t minus zero, change in t values, I guess, here. We know that sine of zero nulls out. We know that zero turns out to be equal to zero. And look at that, you get sine of t over t uh, as a final answer. It says 64% of people got this right. Hmm, okay, that's a little lower than I'd expect. Uh, you can actually see an explanation. I'm sure if you get it wrong, you, you can click that too. Uh, it, and it says a, pretty much what I said. Um, all right, so the fun part. What if I asked you to find the limit as you approach zero? The limit as t approaches zero of this function, sine of t over t. If you attempt to plug in zero, not gonna work out in your favor because sine of zero is zero. Uh, and, and, and it turns out, you know, you plug in zero for t, that's just zero. Ugh, gross, you get an indeterminate, which doesn't help you. So a uh, graphical approach is warranted here. Uh, there are other methods, but we're pretending we don't know uh, other methods for now. So it's a nice little graph and it's just saying, all right, well, what happens when you approach that value? If you go on exactly zero, uh, it's gonna tell you, hey, I can't do that. And man means, hey, I can't do that. So just so you know. And that's an important uh, conceptual piece to calculus. So the limit at this value exists. The function, the output, does not. You cannot evaluate this function at zero, but you can find the limit as it approaches zero. Pretty big conceptual jump for some people that are very new in the calculus realm. Uh, so if, if we're looking at this guy here, we will see the same exact thing. It's actually a hole here. It's undefined. So uh, the expression gets closer and closer to one. That, that's the answer to that. So a lot of people got that right, which is good. Uh, you're given a graph, so that's nice. And um, that's pretty much what it's walking you through is that this idea of a limit. So we need that limit notation. Now, this is the super strange one. Uh, we have sine of one over X and you get this weird thing. Um, I, I try to teach this to my students and the way I taught it to them is 
I was like, look what happens here. It just, you just keep going up and down forever and ever and ever. And I kept just staring at them like, is this helping? Is this helping? <laughs> okay, let, let's think about this. If you plug in a decimal like 0.5, that's pretty close to zero. All right, let's try 0.05. That's going to render a different value than 0.01. And that's going to render a different value than 0.008, whatever the case may be. Point I'm saying is, we can plug in as many numbers as we want to x that are close to zero because you can keep getting smaller and smaller. And if we think about the range of a sine function, it goes from negative one to one. So we can just keep getting smaller and smaller and you're gonna, you're gonna get you know, 0.7 at one point, you're gonna get negative 0.9 at another point, and it keeps going up and down and that window, that, that uh, period window is gonna keep shrinking and shrinking and shrinking until it's infinitely small. And this is called an oscillating discontinuity. And it's just a, a nightmare to play around with. Uh, so with that said, limit does not exist. The expression doesn't get particularly close to any value. Uh, it just goes up and down and up and down and up and down forever and ever, infinitely close forever. Okay, fun. Uh, so that's kind of what this is saying. Uh, it, it, uh, it oscillates forever between negative one and one. And uh, the final result doesn't converge to any particular value. What if you scale it by x instead? All of a sudden, x gets really, really close to zero, and it null nullifies this guy out completely. Uh, it turns out we're getting really, really, really close to uh, zero in this function a. It gets closer and closer to zero because we're multiplying by x. x ends up being pretty much zero, and it doesn't matter what's going on with sine of one over x. So you can graph these on Desmos too, and that's a nice visualization. You can play around with it. You can scroll. And very clearly here with x times sine of 1 over x, I keep scrolling in. Very clearly I'm, I'm getting really, really close to 0. So when you graph the sine of 1 over x, though, what happens when you keep scrolling in? You know, I'm a bit tempted to see what happens if I scroll in infinitely close. I'm getting a bit of an urge to go in. Sir, we know the limit does not exist. I strongly advise against this. I gotta figure it out. I gotta see what's at the end of the tunnel. Calculus says the limit does not exist. I do not advise. Heh, <laughs> I'm going in. Tell my daughter I love her. You do not have a daughter. Then tell my dog I love him. Your dog has been dead for 10 years. You need to get over that. Then it's already too late. I'm going in. The limit does not exist. Yeah, what she said. That is all I have for this episode. Please continue to math on and I will do the same. I'll see you in the next video.